Beppe Gambetta, I am an Italian musician and some of you might know me because I am often on the road in the United States and people know that I have a big passion for good food and good music and I'm here in the house of my friend Fulvio uh, to bring you uh, in this uh, journey uh, in the Italian food. We are going to have a, a party and we are going to uh, cook all together uh, as is typical uh, in, uh, in Italy, uh, in this house that is 300 years old and that I will show you and uh, you will be together with us in this journey. So let's drink a little glass of wine because this is an important part of our culture and we need to go in the most important place, the kitchen. This is a really interesting house, you can see here all the ceramics. It's like a little museum and uh, we go up the steps to reach the kitchen. Here we are. Let's see if someone... Hi, buongiorno. Salve. Permesso. Okay, here we are. In this beautiful house, I would like to show you this beauty. This an, uh, these are old bowls that this family restored. And we are gonna see the most nice and important part of the house. This is the kitchen. It's an old style Ligurian kitchen. And uh, we can see old cages on the ceiling. And uh, this is a typical marble sink. Uh, in the old style and uh, we can see the mortar that is uh, one of the most important tools in Ligurian uh, kitchen. Uh, I would like to show you uh, the main ingredients of the food that we are gonna cook today. We have raisins, milk, chestnut flour, uh, sugar and uh, parmesan cheese and uh, uh, garlic and pine nuts and uh, uh, lemons and potatoes uh, and uh, here we have the basil is a winter basil it doesn't have the the color of the beautiful summer basil uh, but uh, is the typical ingredient of the Ligurian kitchen and uh, there is a, a great care in uh, growing this uh, plant and um, to prepare it because this is the base for pesto sauce that is uh, the national food of this area we are ready with the whole family even the cat is here and uh, we're gonna start as usual, you know, working all together uh, as it happens in Italian party. And uh, the first thing that you do uh, is uh, prepare uh, basically and clean the ingredients. But before I would like to tell you what are the dishes that we are going to cook. Uh, these dishes are partially uh, inside in my cookbook, Beppe Cooks, and uh, uh, we are going to uh, cook uh, gnocchi al pesto, that is a, a, a typical uh, kind of uh, Ligurian uh, dish uh, and uh, uh, based on pesto sauce and uh, on potato dumplings. And um, after we are going to prepare focaccia, focaccia di patate. That means uh, potato focaccia is a, is a sort of a uh, special, let's say, nobilitated bread that the people in this mountain invented. And um, these uh, will be the two main courses and after we are going to have a great sweet, a traditional, really traditional uh, sweet that is called castagnaccio. Uh, actually, we have also the photograph here of castagnaccio. I can show you. This is. And uh, uh, is a, a sweet that uh, is based on chestnut flowers and pine nuts and, and, raisins, and raisins. And um, when uh, you start to work, you need to have some help from the friends. And I would, would like to start to give to this kid one important work to do. Uh, you know, we need to grate the cheese. We, we have an old cheese grater. I think maybe, maybe is, is not the best to use. I will give him the, the more modern one. Please do this for me and I will call other friends to help. You can go on the other table to start to cook the potatoes and boil them. Is a, because this is the main ingredients and I will give this, this work to Fulvio. And uh, the basil needs to be cleaned and we have another volunteer to clean all the leaves of the basil. 
and uh, actually also the chestnut flower. The chestnut flower needs to uh, be strained and so we have the fourth person helping us. And in the meanwhile, while everyone is working, we are gonna a moment in the rest of the house. They are working and yes, we, I would like to, to show you the beauty of this place. Okay, I have the excuse to show you this bathroom because I wash the hands to start to cook. And uh, I think this is a beautiful old style bathroom. And uh, it deserves to be seen. Uh, look what uh, beautiful furniture here are. And uh, besides the, the bathroom, there are other great parts of this house. Let's see. Yes, and here we go in the living room. It's a beautiful living room. I, I love it because look what we can see in this furniture. We, ah, we have so many beautiful glasses. I think I'm gonna take some of, some of these glasses for our aperitif because aperitif is an important part of Italian culture. Let's see, let's have a, a look uh, to the sleeping room and after we go back to the kitchen. Okay, look here, what a beautiful sleeping room. Actually, I'm gonna take a nap while the other people are working. And after, we will go back to the kitchen and see what they are doing. ready with our ingredients we can continue to work and you know I forgot I need some rosemary Pietro would you like to take some rosemary for me you should say yes yes okay please go we have all the ingredients ready and now we have to start to cook uh, but I think before it's better I give you the exact amount of ingredients for every single recipe so you can copy it and you can follow me in all of this work. I introduce you to pesto with this uh, fresh basil. The, the main ingredients are uh, fresh basil, salt, pine nuts, olive oil, Hmm, takes a little long. And uh, together with the olive oil, we will have also garlic. Garlic, uh, uh, in my opinion, in the opinion of the, uh, all the people of this region, shouldn't be overwhelming the taste of, of uh, pesto. Maximum for every pesto that you prepare for four people, one clove of garlic is the uh, right amount. So, let's put it. And uh, the other main ingredient is uh, the Parmesan, but uh, usually people add the Parmesan a little later. So the, this is the hard work part. You know, to prepare pesto, you need to work at least minimum for half an hour with mortar and pestle. And uh, this is a, a labor of love. And uh, people wakes up early to do it, to do it in the, in the right way and you can really feel the difference in the taste you know when you prepare pesto in the real mortar it's something magic and you should try it i i have to continue to work on the other side so i think i'm gonna ask fulvio to help me i have so many helpers please fulvio Give me a little help in here, and uh, I will go in another, in another part of the kitchen to prepare castagnaccio. And uh, to prepare castagnaccio, you need uh, to add milk in this way to the chestnut flour. Half liter of milk in 250 grams of flour.
and uh, four or five spoons of sugar. And a little sip of oil, that helps. We will work it a little bit and we will let it rest. Oh, actually, we need to have a, a zest of the lemon added. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go into the garden. A great thing is also to prepare food, uh, taking uh, the ingredients directly from your garden. And we are going to take the lemon directly from the garden of this house. Yes, let's go. It gives a great taste. Be careful with the skin of a lemon. That is a biological lemon that doesn't have any chemicals. And wash it well. And here we are. Into the pan. Yeah. I'm sorry you cannot uh, smell great smell of the chestnut flour. Actually, in the United States, chestnut flour is not so easy to find. You, you will need to ask to some Italian to bring some to you, or you, you can find it in really some extremely specialized shops. A little oil on it. Fine nuts, many, many of them. And more that you put, better it comes. So, let's put some more. Here we are, we are finished. But not totally finished, we, we need to, to add also some fennel seeds. And uh, they give a good taste and they have also another purpose that I cannot tell on the TV, but some people might understand it. Okay, the potatoes are ready. Now we take them from the fire and we are gonna use the potato squeezer. And we are gonna peel them, of course, and prepare them to make the perfect dough. Here, in the meanwhile, I am preparing a little sauce that is uh, really good to add over the focaccia. Uh, I got this fresh rosemary and uh, it's really, really an easy thing. You, you put some fresh rosemary, some pieces of garlic and uh, some oil and some salt. And this is the preparation, it's extremely easy. And uh, we will work it a little bit. Here we are. Okay, this is enough and we will uh, work it a little bit with a fork and we let it stay because the taste needs to melt together. We will use after a, a piece of rosemary as a brush to put it on the focaccia. Okay, we can let it here. Okay, now we have the potatoes squeezed and the great thing is that uh, half of the potato we will use for, uh, for gnocchi and half of the potatoes we will use for the uh, focaccia. So uh, we can work uh, uh, at the same time to, on two doughs and uh, this is interesting, the 
the dough for the for the focaccia needs to be half and half, so the uh, you can weigh it, or you can also understanding by looking, by having a look, uh, it should be the same amount of uh, of potatoes and of flour. Here, on the other side, we prepare the dough for the gnocchi, and the dough for the gnocchi has uh, needs to have a, a major amount of potatoes and a minor amount of flour. The dough is close to be ready, and uh, but it needs to rest, and the yeast needs to work. So we have something to help it. We will cover it. And tell her, please be good, please rest well. Okay, also the dough for the gnocchi is ready. We leave it a moment, rest, and after I will show you how to do the gnocchi. And uh, we go a moment to the cellar because this house has a beautiful cellar. And uh, when you prepare a meal, is is really good with friends. To have a little glass of wine as an aperitif. Come with me. This cellar is really beautiful. It's also big. You can see a lot of great things. Here we are. This cellar is really, really big, it's never ending. And uh, uh, this is the wine area. We need, yes, we, we can go together to take one, one bottle. And uh, yes, you can see this bottle is, uh, is wine from the farmer. In Italy, many people uh, buy directly uh, the, the wine from the farmer, so they uh, they bottle it by themselves with, without putting any uh, any sign on it. And uh, here we are. Now we have this sparkling wine, and uh, we we have to invite all the other all the other people to do our toast. Yeah. Probably children will have, uh, what, Coca-Cola? <laughs> <laughs> okay, is, it is the moment. Salute. 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 To our guests. Here we are again, the dough for the focaccia is ready and the yeast worked well. So we, and this is actually the most fun part. The preparation of focaccia is fun. It is really, really fun. Because uh, uh, you need to sprinkle some oil on it. And uh, when you sprinkle some oil, you need to do some, let's call them little creatures with your hands in this way. Here we are, these are the creatures, and you put the oil on it. One important thing about the focaccia of potatoes is that uh, you don't put too much salt in the dough, but you add the salt on the top of it, and it makes the taste particularly special. This is the focaccia ready to go into the oven. Okay, now I will show you how to do gnocchi. Gnocchi is uh, an art that uh, 
I got from my Aunt Maria, who is my food guru. Everyone in Italy has an Aunt Maria. And uh, my Aunt Maria told me to do it in this way. And uh, you do a long, long snake of pasta. And you make it longer and longer and longer and longer until it reaches this thickness and you cut it. You cut it in this way. And here comes again the, the fun part. To, to prepare the gnocchi, you need to have a little bit more clean hands and you pass with the, with the middle finger on gnocco, so in, in the way that you do a hole inside. And uh, maybe I show you, well, how it works. So, and, and you send it away, in this way. This is the way of Zia Maria. I can show you how, it, how it's nice, because every gnocco, you can see, it has a really, really nice hole inside where, where the pesto sauce will go. And uh, you throw them away, so that uh, you have uh, enough space to continue your work. And uh, it is quite quick in this way. The water needs to be salted before uh, you throw the gnocchi inside. You need a good amount of salt into the water and after the gnocchi. And now that they are all uh, cooking, it will take uh, just a short time to, to, to cook, probably five minutes. And when they, uh, they come up in, uh, on the surface, uh, the gnocchi are ready. Okay, now we will see if Castagnaccio is ready. Oh, actually, it's really ready. That's great. This is more or less the, how it should look when, uh, when you take it out from the oven. And uh, let's put it on the table because it's really warm. You have to just to sprinkle some powdered, le uh, for, first let it cool and after you can sprinkle some uh, powdered sugar and it is ready to eat as a dessert. Okay, now we will see if the focaccia is ready. Oh, it's exactly ready. Look what a beautiful color. Here we are, this is focaccia di patate. And uh, I suggest you to put on the focaccia a special sauce. I, I actually invented this sauce, it's my little invention, as I showed you before. Now the sauce is ready, it's, it's just uh, oil, garlic, and uh, rosemary, and some salt and we put it on. And now I use the rosemary as a brush and I will put on the focaccia some of this oil that has a special super taste and focaccia is ready. So you have to drain the gnocchi really, really well. Not too much water it needs to stay. And now we throw them in the bowl. You can see what a beautiful color has this pesto. And we throw it on.
so much. We are ready to eat with all our guests. The glasses are full of wine, and uh, I hope that uh, with all the secrets that we teach to you, you will be able to prepare the same meal in your account. The meal is over. All the guests are drinking their after-dinner grappa. I'm trying to, oops, to take away some of this uh, flour that is on me, myself on, on the guitar, and uh, as in uh, the best Italian tradition, I would like to play for you a little serenade. Rosie. 